Hello everyone, and welcome to World War II at 80. My name is Ron May. I'm an author, historian, and public speaker on World War II history and stories. My new video series is a monthly review of events that took place 80 years ago during the last two years of World War II. Each monthly episode will review the most significant events that took place in that month in 1944, as well as feature a story or two from those who were there. We'll begin with our first episode today, which focuses on the events and stories of January 1944. To set the context for what happened in January of 1944, we need to briefly review what had already taken place during the first two years of the war. U.S. forces had landed in North Africa in late 1942 and helped the British defeat German tank divisions there in 1943. Following their victory, the U.S. and British armies then springboarded from North Africa into Sicily in July 1943, map at left, and then reached the mainland of Italy in September of 43, the map at the right, all the while engaging enemy German forces. At the start of 1944, U.S. forces made another bold amphibious landing on the Italian shore. This one was near the coastal cities of Anzio and Nettuno, located 35 miles south of Rome, and noted on the map by the Yellow Arrow. The date for the landing was January 22nd, and the code name was Operation Shingle. The goal of the landing was to break the stalemate in southern Italy between German and Allied forces by flanking the enemy and piercing their Gustav line of defense before moving on to Rome. This worthy effort would, however, bog down quickly with the superior defensive resistance of the German forces and would keep the Allies pinned down to the beachhead for the next four months. New York City native Ennis Gray, who later moved to Indianapolis, was on hand for the landing at Anzio and the battle that followed. He was a member of the Army's 3rd Infantry Division, and he wrote about his experience at Anzio in his personal memoir. I begin with this long quote. Eight months after enlisting in the Army, I find myself going over the side of a ship, climbing down a cargo net and dropping into a Higgins boat on the high swell of the sea in the middle of the night. The Higgins boats form a circle. Other boats join the circle. There are many boats circling. Then on a signal, they all form a line parallel to the shore. The engines roar. We head in. The boat scrapes bottom. The ramp drops down and we all run out of the boat, waist deep in the water, and get to the shore. We move inland. We have landed at a place called Anzio, Italy. What is about to develop is a major battle of World War II with the objective of entering Rome. Initially, the enemy offered little or no resistance, but they quickly adjusted to provide a major force opposing the division. Plus, they were holding the high ground. The division held low, muddy, flat farmland. The enemy had the advantage and knew how to use it. This resulted in a violent standoff that raged for four months. End of Ennis Gray's quote. Meanwhile, Allied operations in the South Pacific were increasing as well at the start of 1944. Japan had reached its zenith of territorial control two years earlier in 1942. You can see the extent of that territory in the map. Allied advances against Japanese naval and air forces had begun with a stalemate in the Coral Sea in 1942, the red arrow at the bottom of your screen, followed by a victory at Midway Island in 1942, which is marked with the yellow arrow. The island of Guadalcanal, noted with the brown arrow, was brought under Allied control by February 1943, and Tarawa, 
in the Gilbert Island chain, noted with the green arrow, fell in no November of 1943. At the end of 1943, the Allies had progressed northwesterly from the Solomon Island chain. They landed at Bougainville Island, the red arrow at the right, in November of 43, and they jumped to New Britain Island at the end of December, noted by the second red arrow to the left. The Marines landed on Bougainville Island in November of 1943, and Army forces arrived on the island in January 1944. Carl Hawkins was one of the Army infantrymen that landed on Bougainville. Born in 1923 in Trafalgar, Indiana, Hawkins was assigned to the 132nd Infantry Regiment, the Americal Division. Their mission was to defeat the Japanese forces that had occupied the island since 1942. During combat there, Hawkins was injured. While in his foxhole, he was hit in the back of the head with shrapnel or a bullet fragment. He turned around and was then hit again, this time on the side of his mouth. He was sent to a hospital in the Philippines and following his recovery, returned to combat. But a nasty scar marred his upper lip. He grew a mustache to hide it. It was a mustache that he would wear for the rest of his life. Carl Hawkins died in 2003. New Britain Island was located just west of Bougainville. The Marines landed at Cape Gloucester at the far west end of the island on December 26, 1943. The objective of the campaign was to neutralize the important Japanese base at Rabaul, the capital of New Britain, located on the far right of the island, Note, noted with a green arrow. By January 1944, the combat operations were in full swing against the Japanese who had invaded the island years earlier and were defending it. Fighting would continue here until the end of the war in August 1945. Meanwhile, in England, the massive amphibious landing operation that would take place at Normandy, France was only six months away. In December 1943, President Roosevelt had appointed General Eisenhower as the Supreme Allied Commander to oversee the operation. By January 1944, Eisenhower was in England, finalizing the plans for Operation Overlord with the other members of the Supreme Headquarters of the Allied Expeditionary Forces, made up of both British and U.S. generals and leaders. During this same month, midget submarines of the Combined Operations Pilotage Parties secretly visit the Normandy beaches six months prior to the landings in order to take sand samples. The samples of sand are needed to confirm that the sand on the certain sections of the chosen landing beaches would support the weight of the tanks that the Allies planned on landing six months later. Preparations for the Normandy invasion are also taking place in the air in early 1944. Across many parts of Europe, including France and Holland, British and U.S. aircraft begin to drop weapons and supplies to the various resistance groups located in the occupied countries. The weapons and supplies will enable them to fight back against the occupying Germans. Learn more about World War II history during 1944 and the stories of Ennis Gray and Carl Hawkins, as well as other veteran stories, in my World War II trilogy, Our Service, Our Stories, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. The books are available for purchase on my website, ronaldpmay.com. To contact me for questions or to schedule me for a speaking engagement, email me at ron at ronaldpmay.com. Also, be sure to check out all my other videos on my YouTube channel at World War II History and Stories with Ron May. Please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Please share it with others who you think may be interested. See you next month for our next episode featuring the events and stories of February 1944, World War II at 80.